Jazz and Jungle for the drive part two. So me and Jazz have just been to um, West Kirby. Over the water. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's beautiful, actually, John. We we're gonna go for a walk around West Kirby, but we started off to go for a walk, didn't we? We're going to Cheshire instead. We're going to Helsby Hill. Seems that he enjoyed the last one, the last drive, John, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing podcasts, and the last drive we've done got more views than the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's going on, Jack? Not much. Uh, <laughs> we were just like listening to shit. On the <laughs> so where was we last time? We were talking about we just left school. Is that where we was? Yeah. We, do you know what? We should film our recording. We just had. We just been talking about nostalgia. We're talking about um, patching pigeons. Pigeon grabbing. What did you call grabbing? Did you wear from Liverpool years ago and you went grabbing with your mates? Pigeon. I have got a story. Apparently, it's massive in Dublin. Is it? Yeah, so me and my mates used to collect the, um, we collect, well, you don't collect pigeons, do you? <laughs> the live, the live animals, are they? But we did, we collected them, unfortunately. But, but, that, but, sorry Jazz, that beep's gonna keep going on, and I'm aware of it. Fuck them. <laughs> and you're gonna remind me of it. <laughs> like the Darren Till one. Like the Darren Till, we know. We know the audio was shit. We know, I'm a good to the body. Going on, no, he's still going on about it. Same people are watching it twice and, and expecting better audio the second time. Oh, I love it. And they're leaving comments. I That's just watched that How Are We Family Land podcast with John May, Jazz, and Darren Till. And uh, oh, the audio, I mean, I did enjoy it, love, but the audio was really, really bad. <laughs> Why don't you let them know? Oh, I'll let them know in the comments. Yeah, do you think they knew? Do you think they knew? You're best letting them know. Oh, thanks for your help, but we know. Please refrain from telling us that we're a gang of clowns. You haven't the mic. That was a fantastic episode, by the way. Really? Yeah. That was our most watched one, you know. Up to now. It was fun. Because that's what we and Jazz are about. We're just fun, fun, fun. Are we, Jazz? We are. Now we're chatting fucking Believe shit. Believe it or not. Anyway, watch your pigeon, 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 pigeon story. So we used to go grabbing and we used to catch pigeons in the uh, the early 2000s, late 90s. Me and my mates and we had, a, we had a pigeon loft in our back garden. We used to collect the pigeons and you keep them for a while. You would feed them every day for about a month and then you would let them out. And once they go out, the longer you would starve them all day, all day you wouldn't give them no food. And then when you let them out, they fly around the loft before they knew where they were going. And then you'd so you get um, the food back back in the loft. They'd, they'd watch them, they'd watch you throw the food back in. And then they, they'd come back in for the food then. And then you know, you would say it's been laying out. That would you say it's lamed out? And what was that lamed? You, lamed you taught it's a home to you. Now it's your bed, yeah. But sometimes it was a good bed. You keep it for a little bit longer, and you would think this might get off this. Didn't mean, but if you didn't really care about it, it's like after two weeks, sometimes they fly away. <laughs> just get out when they've gone. You know what I mean? Just get sick of it. <laughs> get a, get a fed like milky bar buttons. You don't feed pigeons on milky bar buttons, do you? John? They don't eat milky bar buttons, they don't like cavities, they only eat Mars bars. <laughs> so after a while, they just, they just get off, but then, you know, he learns how to chop bait then. Do you know I started a dove release company? Well, I say I started a dove release company. You trust them? Well, the idea was, it was called White Wings Dove Release. Send your love, save with a dove. Right, that was my idea, so it was weddings, like funerals, because I heard you can dye them, you can dip them. So, because I've got black pigeons for funerals, you know, like Valentine's Day, because I've had pink ones, you know what I mean? So, because I've opened the box, <gasps> you know, and all that. I was actually on John Bishop's <laughs> Britain, I was, and I told them the, the researchers about it, and they filmed it and stuff, and they made it look like it was a pitch to uh, Doug Valentine on the Dragon's Dead. It's on the internet somewhere, honest to God. So, White Wings Dove really send your love, say with a dove. And I was going out barn owls as well, flying down the aisle with the ring, because I used to fly hawks. And um, so I had a barn owl about like kestrels. That's a good shout, that. Yeah, so you, you, you'd be at the, you know, the bride and groom and the bride would, like the groom would be like, oh, where's the room? Oh, oh, Bear in oh, mind, oh. you have to be an absolute lunatic, wouldn't you? Too? It's quite simple, really. <laughs> it's quite simple to do. Anyway, so, I, I, you know, this is the day before the internet, well, not the internet, but <laughs> Facebook, I'm not. <laughs> Anyone got any said. doves? So I went out and bought doves, didn't I? Fucking doves, right? But I'm laying them out. You can't really do that with doves. You can. Well, these ones didn't fucking work. 
I bought all, I ended up buying all, I thought it was a bit, I bought a real bird man. Well you can I get a, all white pigeons that you wouldn't know. Well, well you last know, one I had to get. You didn't know pigeons, you know. Yeah, was, you I had to get white racing pigeons. pigeons. So I used to take them out, I used to like, I used to take them to Evan Valley and let them go from there and I tried to go further and stuff. Yeah. But um, never really took off, it would, the idea was there, it would, it would have done really well. But um, Someone's coming about that now, aren't they? Let them, you can have it, take it, if it works for you, congratulations, because I will not be doing it. I w I'm going to, I only rent at the moment, but when I get a house, um, um, I probably will get a barn out. Really? Yeah. Keep it in the house? Not in the house, but I'll have it in the back. I remember my uncle had one brought one in years ago, to my cousin's house, and he was just walking through the house. Really? Just down the aisle, needy, aren't he? <laughs> Needy and greasy, yeah. I think barn owls are the most beautiful animal in the world. I remember one time I was driving in my car and a barn owl was flying next to my car at the same speed as my car and I was just looking at it. And the only word to describe it, Jazza, was majestic. <laughs> it was majestic. <laughs> you ended up swimming out and swimming on because you went off a cliff. You yeah. Take your eyes off the owl. But do you know what? It was a bit fucking weird. Barn owls are beautiful, aren't they? I always think that when you see a pigeon flying over your car, your car is doing 30 miles an hour. Bloody okay, hell, this is like a sauna, this car. Is <laughs> yeah. it saying it? I just don't want to say it, you know? Where were we? School? No, we're, we're, we're talking nostalgia, where are we talking about the cost sackies and cherry fucking Rockport and stuff? Hey Jazzy, how many, how many Lacoste sackies did you have? No, <laughs> absolutely none. <laughs> Someone said that's me when I was a kid. It was a statement. <laughs> he was basically calling me a meth. I never had one. He knew he knew the rubber zip on me look like that he meant that it weren't real. And that, that was the end of that story. <laughs> but I swore again him back years later, but by the time I grown up, he grown up because he was still bigger than my shoulders. I hope you're watching, because that's where we're going now. We're going to yours. I'll wait in the car, because I'm not that hard, but Jazz is fucking SS. I don't know. Well, I'm, right, so, I'm just gonna let it. I'm just gonna let it go, then. I'm, yeah, let it go. I'm sweating more because you know the watching. Why didn't you write it? Why didn't you write a little message, right? Write a little message, and we'll put it on a little white dove's fucking foot, and we'll release it. Yeah, but where is it gonna end up? So anyway, someone has to catch it, wouldn't they? It ends up a strag, a sleep bear, wouldn't it? Strag, 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 strag. Anyway, like we're just fucking up. It's here. fucking Hello. roasting in it. Can you still hear us? Thanks, you, Richard. I know the air conditioning's gonna be car. Yeah, you see. Do you know what? Ooh. I leased cars for years, right? And I thought I'm not doing it anymore, so I bought a car. Fucking hell. I wish I'd have spent the money on leasing a car. That's why I choose faster car finance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I fucking got that one in, didn't I? Click the link below. I'm not even sweating, we just said, you know, for that one. But anyway, leaving school, John, where were we? Where were we when we were leaving school? What was the last thing we spoke about in the last podcast? Did he do everything? Yeah, sorry. No, you never did he? No. The last thing we spoke about when we were leaving school, that's when we were jobs. It's all my jobs, remember? Yeah. You had the job. Trainee civil engineer. I was a brick. What was I? No, I... I was telling someone this story last night. I've got a mate who's a. Uh, she does things with ears in a, in a opticians. Is it an order or the dentist? Hi, Josie. But anyway, she um she says she lies to to uh, for fun. She lies to her patients. Like like a patient said to her, like the parking around here is terrible. And she went, I know, it took me a good 20 minutes this morning. But she doesn't even drive. Sorry, Josie. But she does it. Oh, I shouldn't have saying this, should I? Yeah. Anyway, it then led me on She's to another. It, it led me on to another story, I remember. Where I used to work in Manchester when I was 16. I used to have to get the train or the bus home. Short and sleep bus station. So it was like a mile and a half walk from this building site to this station. And what I used to do for a laugh, I used to ask randomers for directions in a different accent, even no one knew the directions, right? So one time I asked this fella, he said, excuse me, mate, could you tell us where Chorlton Street bus station is? And he was like, funnily enough, I'm going there now. Walk with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I walked for yeah, a mile and a half with some fella and I had to pretend it was a Geordie. 
Lucky you ain't a Josie, man. You didn't use a Josie. Yeah, so loud. How fucked up am I, lads? But that's having fun, isn't it? My life's about chess. It is. Could have been worse, could it? Could have mugged them. Because it's a mugged yet. I took his bus bus. I got on the same bit. It's an unusual little chap, isn't she? No comments. No comments. School! Leaving school. What did you do after you left school? I got sent to college. Oh, first thing I've done, I've done joinery in college afterwards. Did you? Yeah, it went for me. Mm, yeah, I'm not a builder. I'm a creative genius. I'm County Road dancer to Kanye West. <laughs> Kanye, Kanye North. It's the North End. <laughs> do you know what? Like, it's so hot in this car. Oh, bad, Just think of the train. It's like being in a, it's like being in a sauna in your fucking sweatsuit, Jess. It's good though, all this weight. I've got a fight coming up, haven't I? It's a big one. Tell us about it. Tell me more. You don't like to tell us about it? I am. Could, we, could we be fighting on the, um, the Billy Joe Canelo card? But I'm not, no. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> you don't talk about that? Never had a positive ending yet. Well, you was you was meant to be fighting on that, weren't you? Yeah. Well, it was a possibility. I was actually signed two fights on that. That date. Yeah, but it didn't work out that way. Media issues. Damn COVID. But anyway, uh, do you know what, mate? The show still goes on. I'm still fighting some world title. So I'll be, I'll be on the way by the time, by the time this video's over. I know it's different, but it, it's like sometimes, in my experience, you know, when I've really wanted something, like for example, a certain acting job or a commercial or whatever, and I've wanted. I remember going over for a beer commercial, right? And I got down to the last two. And I, I got, I would have got X amount of money. And I was gutted, Chazza. And then three weeks later, I got a far better job with far more money yeah, yeah. but because it was beer I would if I'd done the first one I wouldn't have been able to have done that one so in my experience when things like that happen to me I have a confidence yeah. it's because something better's coming along yeah. I've, I've always I've got evidence every time I've faced like anything like that set back I've got evidence that it always works out for the best mm. so it's not well in my experience well, so, everyone's not was it just think like <coughs> oh, do you become a victim then? <coughs> but no, we keep going. So, have you got any idea when the fight is? Twelfth of July. Not far away, like. Oh. When is it now? Big, big month for me and you, lot. July, yeah, you got the show, haven't you? Yeah. Can you talk about it? Yeah. Collaborate. John may laugh. <laughs> Not to me, like you wouldn't tell me, have you? No. Well, I can't, I can't say too much, but. It's got to be the best thing I've ever done. It's like, because, you know, I've been acting for, yeah, I'll tell you, I've been acting for like 15 years, right? And I've, you know, I'm there with knobs on me. I'm there with every audition, every cast, and everything. Boom, boom, boom. I'm there. I'm fucking there, man. And, you know, I could go on the rest of my life without getting me break. And I've created this little thing, and I know it means a lot to me. Do you know what I mean? Because I've created my own... Your baby, isn't it? I've created my own little platform, I've created my own little, my own little product, if you like. So, and that's given me the ability, and thanks to people, to be able to go and do live shows. And it's all good and well, me doing funny videos on Instagram. I want to move on to the next level now. And that's doing these live shows. What was my point? And it's, it's, I've been writing it, and it's, it's not something I've done before, but just because I haven't done it before, it doesn't mean I can't make it absolutely fucking amazing. And that's my plan. But... Um, yeah, it, it's been tough getting it together, but it's all going to come together. Do you, do you find that nobody's saying there 15 years, John? That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. Your overnight success sort of thing, isn't it, yeah. really? Yeah. Do you find that doing, dancing to the tune of other people is hard, more hard work long term than it is? You mean having the power in someone else's hands? But well, now you've you've said no, well, I'm gonna be independent with the things that you're doing, isn't it? Do you find that being independent, it's it's hard work to start off with. But you're then, in control, it. But then comes a the time when you think, "Thank fuck, I've done that." Mate, look, it's like for me, like I've, I've say, been doing this for years. The world fell apart. We weren't allowed outside the house. And I've, I, I just thought, fuck it. And I've just been creative. So if I've made my own break and not been given a break, and if I've made my own break at a point in time when the world 
was an absolute fucking a shit show. I'd be extremely proud of myself, Jazz, because not only have I made my own break yeah. and I've opened my own door, but I've done it at the worst possible time. So if I can do it then, yeah. it, it, you know, it's that's evidence to me. You know, look, John, you are talented. Look, John, you are. And it took me a long time to be able to admit that to myself. Because some people might watch that and go, calling themselves talented. I am. But I wouldn't have admitted it. D yeah, yeah, See, probably. now I'm questioning myself now, thinking, does that sound cocky? No. But if I can't believe in myself, what the fuck? How do I expect you to believe in me? Yeah. I um, think about it. I don't like the people watching you say, yeah, well, it's all right for you. You have to live, you've got three kids and, and you have to do nine to five and that, stuff like that. In that situation, what do you think that, what would your advice be to them people? Yeah, it's all right for you to go and do that. Because I've been in that situation, John, and I've made a card to pass for myself when they was all on the table, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was struggled in that way to be where I am today. Thank God. No, but you, you, you see it all the time. Say, no, it's too easy to say it's all right for you, isn't it? I just happened to see two things yesterday, like Ricky Tomlinson just happened to watch the thing about Ricky Tomlinson and he used to go to Leeds to buy plates in the night on a Friday night, stay up and go and sell them at Gracie in the morning, he didn't have a pot to piss in. I watched something else about Bruce Lee, where Bruce Lee, he had nothing, he had fucking nothing. He comes to America with fuck all. I used to wash plates and oh, I, he had it even worse because he was, you know, Chinese people, they were a laughing stock. They weren't taken seriously in yeah. cinema. And he fought through all that. And he, yeah. now he's, I know he's dead, but he's Bruce fucking Lee. So all these people start with nothing. And I could have that victim mentality and go, oh, well, look, and I'll go to all these auditions and I'm not getting a job. And all these recognised actors are getting jobs and all that. Sounds, well, fucking carving on pot, man. People won't like that, though, will they? No, people like it's to be victims, it's easier. Yeah, it's always yeah. someone else's fault. Yeah, but you've always got a choice, and you can choose to do something about it, or you can choose to fucking moan. Whatever direction you choose to go in, that's entirely up to you. You said that, uh, you said about Bruce Lee, then he come to America. People are going to think we're in America, because he come, he went, Bruce Lee went to America. Shit, blew our cover, haven't we? <laughs> we're not in America. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Heswell, I think. We are, actually. No, we're in Neston now. Gracie as well, you said about Ricky Thomas and Gracie, John. Yeah, he said he, he said he had a blanket as Silla Black's mum used to have a blanket next to him on the floor selling stuff. Yeah. yeah, and he used to play the banjo in the halfway house and his dad used to always sit next to Ricky. But he said he weren't really into Silla Black. Didn't like it, weren't that fussed on it, got on against the girl, but you know, she's a professional scout and she didn't really live here. Is it true her name Priscilla White? Yeah, Priscilla White. Priscilla White. My mum went to school with her brother, St. Terence. Apple Street, that we, on Scotty, you know. Apple Street. Well, she went to St. Gerrard's anyway. But he, my mum went to St. Gerrard's with her brother. One of my first jobs was under 80. Yeah, you're saying that. I was that last time, weren't I? I was too shy, though, John. Selling black DVDs and I have to shout, See, you're going to sell them all, will I? I am. Where's me? Sorry about the DVDs, weren't I? Like, in my hallway in Maker Street, we had this little ledge on top of the front door, and throughout the week, I used to like try and, you know, get a fiver together. I'm only talking about nine, and like, you know, I was nine. And I used to, um, I used to try and get a fiver together in a week, just so I can go to Gracie on the bus for eight pence to go and buy a TV. 8p on the bus? Yeah, that's what it was, it was 8p oh. or 12p. And um, I remember going, I remember, I think the first one I ever bought was Tina Turner's What's Love Got To Do With It. <laughs> it was a film, I just love films and shit like that. It went a DVD, it was a... Was a, 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 a P, that's it was a lot, isn't it? Yeah, but you're in the right man, it's the fucking kids, I fucking nan go to fucking Gracie. You buy your Tina Turner's, <laughs> It was just because it was a film. I didn't care what it was. What about the 10 Bob's, don't remember the R50P? Remember the R50P? You'd knock someone out, one of them, wouldn't you? Massive, really. Cause of death, 10 Bob's to the head. <laughs> I don't even know it is. John, we said this last time, people are still watching this. I can't even remember why we're talking about Well, are we go where were we going, John? We're 17. We left school, what did you start doing? 17 years old. Well, I was a bit of a bum. Well, not a bum, but I had loads of jobs and I was failing at them all, so it became a bit of a joke. 
become a bit of a joke. It's like, what are you doing this week, John? <laughs> Dickhead. And then I started barbering, fell in love with that, and the rest is history. There you have it. <laughs> That's it, wrapping up. Yeah, and now I'm in. I think I'm near Chester. Little, we're in a little less than now. I, I started travelling, John, travelling the Wales. I'd never been abroad until I was 16 and I won the English title as an amateur. And then we got we got a place to, to fight in the, it was torn for calling the Sky Nations. It was England, Scotland and Wales. It used to be England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland. And Ireland left the UK, was it Great Britain? Northern Ireland. Ireland split. What? Well, I don't know, anyway. So, we went from the Four Nations to the Sky Nations. Did you sort of see that smoke? Go on. So anyway, yeah, I, I, uh, so then I won the Four Nations and I got chose to go to the, Euro uh, was the European Union Championships. So I've never been away, not only to get a passport and all that. So this is the first time you went first abroad? First time I've ever been away, yeah. And I've been to Pontins and that the football team. I went to my auntie. Um, and then, remember Haven? Yeah. And then we have Shocking grim. So then I went to uh, not that bad, is it? Maybe you know went the one I went to. Talk it was. Oh. It's full of scouts as well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, but it was rough. And um, I went to when the plane it was made up, John. And I got got to Sardinia, it was a place little island at the bottom of the city, Sardinia. What a cool place to go for the first time we went abroad. So I so I like how people normally come back and do some of these, where have you been? I've been Shut to I've been to Spain, I've been on all the little turkey teats as a kid. Alicante. Yeah. You got the suntan with the with the patches on the face. I used to look at him, what's the patch on his face? That's where he's had the sun cream and the big blob. <laughs> looking at one lad thinking, why has he got a white patch? But like he's got a tan, didn't get it. And um, <laughs> this British freezing in it. And um, yeah, so I got off the plane. And it was just the nicest place in the world. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, I believe it is. Could not believe is that it. where sardines are from? Sardines, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that bit. <laughs> oh, I don't, definitely don't think so. Can I tell you about the first sardines time? Sardines can live anywhere, can't they? Let me tell you about the first time I went abroad, right? The first time I went abroad. I must have only been about 10. Anyway, my mum used to work with this fella called Tony Stevens and Dawn Stevens, right? And my mum worked for them in this pub. Tony was gay, but Tony's one of the lads, do you know what I mean? And he was like, my mum is just running for him and he fucking loved my mum, God bless her. And um, probably we would have been lost without her. Anyway, he had a family, Tony was sound, do you know what I mean? And um, he has a family, the reason why I'm saying that is because... Uh, anyway, so he pulls me, I've got a twin sister Emma, he pulls me to me and her to one side and he went, got some good news for you two. And I went, what? He said, how would you like to go to Florida for two weeks? And I was like, what? He said, I'm taking you and your sister to Florida for two weeks. I've got a big villa, got a pool, got a good idea. And I was like, but I love like American things, you know what I mean? Like growing up, I loved Disney. I, that was just what I was into. And setting fires and climbing back up. <laughs> and um, <coughs> he took us to Florida. Did he? Yeah. And I was like, but I've never been abroad. Oh. But get on this. While I was there, I bumped into this lad called Kev Powell, who was in my school. And I was blown away that I bumped into someone from my school in America. Right? And he was with his little sister, Siobhan. Anyway. So these are these people paying for me to go to Florida, man. And you know what, John and Tony? I'm forever grateful. And um, years passed, years passed, right? And I had a mate who was when I was a kid, Anthony Gower, and Anthony Gower got leukemia, and um, he was pretty bad. But then after he, he went to Florida, you know, people raised money to go to Florida. So I presumed everyone who went to had leukemia or whatever, they always got something amazing. I think you know, if they you know get through it, blah blah blah. So anyway, there's this little boy in my shop called Charlie, and he got leukemia twice. And I seen him in Toys R Us with his nanny, and it was fucking heartbreaking. This little boy looked so ill, man. And it fucking, it, it almost, I didn't cry, but it did get me that much. And I was, I felt so sad. And I was like, hello, Charlie. He's only about four or whatever. And I um, said to his nanny, I was like, 
she said all his treatment's finished and that now but it, you know and I went has anyone is he has anyone arranged the trip or because I presumed everyone done that and she went no so it was playing on my mind a little bit and of course and I didn't say nothing at the time anyway a bit of time passed as mum Siobhan come into the shop with Charlie and I went yeah this is this is about six years no 2017 and I said do you mind if I raise money for him to go away and she went no I feel like getting emotional now I said I said like, I'll raise money for him to go to Euro Disney for the weekend as about that and she went well yeah I said because he deserves it blah 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 so I thought right okay so I got on to Barnes as travel I said how much is it for this family to go to Florida for the uh, uh, Disneyland Paris for two days, blah blah blah. And it was two grand to pay for the flight, and two, it was just a basic holiday anyway. So I said to Owen, "Let's let's create a video, and we'll do a little thing, a little appeal, and we'll raise the money for this kid to go to Disneyland Paris." So anyway, me and Owen doing a video, and Charlie coming a video. It was just dead cute, and then I put it on Facebook. We got two grand in an hour. I know. Oh. So in two days we got twelve thousand pounds. Did you? Yeah. So he ends up going oh. to Florida. I think they flew first class. They had everything. They, they, they had the best of everything. He got he got money for clothes. He got money for spending. He got money for everything. And do you know what the weird thing is? Do you know the little girl I bumped into in Florida when then people paid for me? Mm. It was Siobhan, Charlie's mum. And I didn't realise that till after it. So someone paid for me to go to Florida, and then I re I paid it back, and wow. I didn't even realise that 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 connection was there. The ripple only started. Hmm. Well, anyway, that's my nice story. Now. But you know what? Is he so, okay now, Charlie? Yeah, he's fine now. He's about six foot tall. Fucking now, nah, yeah, he's alright. Yeah, oh. he's alright. He's fine. So yeah, there's my nice story. Makes me dead emotional. That's the best thing I've ever done. Though. I'm so proud. That's it. Shout out, Tony. A little Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> a little shitty blanks, you know. <laughs> nah, just really. He knows. You'll probably see me in a pub in about 50 years' time. I go, I like young. She's like, she's thanks for that, mate. She's like, thanks for that, mate. She's like, don't worry about it, Charlie. Do you want a point? I go, next year, go ahead. Next minute, we're on it all night. <laughs> yeah. I'm what? I like Charlie. Charlie's all right. Did he. Um, where are we now? Seven. Travelling. Well, Travelling, yes, and then, and yeah. And two, two months after that, John. Two months after this, isn't he? The European Championship wins the gold. Now I'm going to the European Championships in Hungary. That's great, that. So you were on an adventure? And then after that, Commonwealth Games, India, from Poland twice, Germany twice. We were wearing medals all over the world, but I'm now getting all of these with it too. And this is a kid that's never been away, really. Still never been on Aldi, other than boxing. Oh, okay. The man is wonderful, living life. It's fantastic. And then I got my Great Britain team by the age of 16, 17. And then um, started selling them. Started selling them, what? So, how did you do with the Great Britain team? Good. Yeah, it's good. It's winning gold. And made the tournaments, Commonwealth Games and European Championships. Now what about I got, I got chose to go to Azerbaijan, a place called Baku for the World Championships. And I got kicked off the team for being a dickhead. Just just arse and mouth. Just like, like, like that was the class clown clown of school. And <laughs> class clown. It's so on here, you know. And, um, Everywhere I went with the class clown. You meet new people. Yeah. Try and find an identity, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So I was still a class clown. <laughs> Got myself kicked off the Great Britain team. Didn't go to World Championships. At that point, <gasps> I was ranked number eight in the world. And that was my chance to be the world, cha world champion for the first time. So I'd never been higher than eight until I turned professional. First time for the world title, I was number eight. Well, let's go back a bit. No, 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 let's go forward. <laughs> no, but wait. When you. Weren't you going to go to the Olympics? I weren't chose to go to the Olympics. I was on the Great Britain team. I was on the development team to go to the Olympics. I had the chance, it was different to look around, you know what I mean? Because when you're going to wait and then you become professional out of the blue? Yeah, well, I was I was 19 with a, with a dream to be a world champion. And there was only somebody picked to go to the Olympic Games. Of course. He'd been before. Go 
Faisi will go Faisi. Chuck Shaggy's there. He can just call him Faisi. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just watching. You know what I mean? He went on to win a world title as a professional, really good fighter. I don't know who he is, by the way, but go. So, I just said, if, if I wait for the next four years for the next cycle for the Olympics, I could be British champion by then. Yeah. With, with, then you're not far behind a world title, then no will be British champion. And, I, and I, I, by the time the next Olympics came, I was fighting for the British title. So I've done what I said I was going to do, but, but in hindsight, I was too young to turn professional. I was 19, but I was still a boy, do you know what I mean? I have no ears on my body or something like that. So immature. Mm. That's why that's people say to me, Can I was watching you when I was a kid. <laughs> people who are in profession now say to me, I, I remember watching you on the telly when I was a kid. And I think, so how old am I? You know what I mean? But it's not that, it's just because I turned professional so young. That it seems like I've been half an age, but I just had a chance to mature. Not many fighters get a chance to be sure, do you? So you're doing a T-Pants a bit then? No, I'm doing myself in. I'm doing myself in, yeah, but people normally get fucking battered. Look at the kid with my face, you know? I have been fucking battered, obviously, evidently. But I had um, a lot of learning experience, you know what I mean? But a lot of fighters don't, don't come to, to it, you know what I mean? But I've had the chance to be sure otherwise they've been a professional. So it's put me in good stead, really, do you know what I mean? And then you fight younger people now and you think, fucking hell, I was his age. And he's just a boy now, do you know what I mean? So it's a good thing that I've had the chance to mature, but I was too young to turn professional. But it was always my dream. But where did you go? You caught you a lot of fighters like that. The yeah. Olympic Games this year, I don't, don't know if they'd be happening. Well, where so, did you meant to happen last year? Yeah, so, yeah, that's, so these top fighters in the Great Britain team will stay for the Olympic cycle. They'll turn, they'll do well, they'll get a medal and turn pro, but now they've got no Wait, yes. Yeah. So the Olympics you would have held out for, was it been these ones? No, no. Ah, oh, okay. Probably two ago now. Oh, was it? Sorry, I was <laughs> sure. I know, you are getting on a bit now, aren't you? <laughs> How old am I? Yeah, I've got like... You're 30 now. A year left to me, I'm fucked, are <laughs> <laughs> Are you to, have you got any idea? Is the, the world title hopefully going to be in the UK? Hopefully, hopefully people can be there, like, and hopefully that the fans will be back in by that point. That'd be handy, wouldn't it? Will Probably handy. will be, you know. Be I reckon handy. it will be. Yeah. They're having events and that now, aren't they? Where it's just everyone's like, yeah. blue, blue and all that. What about that event in the pool? Did it go down well? What are you meant to reset? Do you meant to, um, did it happen? Do you meant to collect data? 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 Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Do you know what, you know what right? We've literally been driving rounds. We're near Chester. That's a dirty team. I'm just yeah. driving rounds. Look at him. Sorry, lads. Yeah. 33 minutes, that's it, just. I know, I think the last one was 47. Okay. Do you know what we've got? You know what we're filming tonight? It doesn't matter, does it? Tell them. We're tell doing, do you remember, do you know, George Sam, hi, George Sam, George Sam, the Wellstone Raider. We've got him on a Zoom tonight. I worked with Gordon Hill. Gordon Hill, is that his name? That's his name. On an, um, he done this video for us, Star Wars. I like, I think I mentioned this. Yeah, no, I didn't say. And um, he came up to Liverpool and just picked him up and there he was. And I was like, no way. I was like, he's like, alright, Jen, you alright, mate? And I was like, hello, mate, you okay? He was like, yeah, yeah. And you know what? We had an absolute fucking ball. I had a fucking ball with him that weekend. I I don't know much about him, Jeffrey Williams. That's new, so I don't know much about Gordon Hill. I also know as well, everyone else knows about the viral video. You want someone give it to you, don't like. <laughs> I don't want to go copy there, but it's all nice, maybe. But that's all I know about him, Joe. So what are, gonna, what are we gonna talk about? Do you know a bit more about him? He's just like, he's just an unlikely hero, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's just, um, you know, he's a little character, isn't he? And, you know, someone was fucking taking the piss out of him. They filmed it, it went viral. And now he's fucking travelling the fucking world. Yeah, you said he got some good opportunities. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just, he's just a lovely human being. And um, if he weren't that, that day that day, no one would know who Gordon Hill was. And we wouldn't be speaking about yeah. him now. So that makes him interesting to me. Uh, I'm going to look forward to getting his backstory. That's what I think about when we start the podcast. How did you grow up and what? What was going on for you to be the way you are now? Do you know what I mean? That's that's what it says me. Yeah. Oh, there's another fellow we can get on. 
not sorted. There was a fella, his name's Dan Wright, and uh, he's a very successful man. Now, I went over the water to meet my mate for the drink last week and in New Brighton, but he's bought this little area and he's bought every pub, and he's so passionate about regenerating the area, do you know what I mean? He's a dead interesting fella. Can we get him on? Yeah, he's dead interesting. Cracking fella. We're waiting for that new studio, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to have to get a wig on. We've got a, uh, a few technical issues at the minute, but... We've both been very, very busy, haven't we, Jazz? Yeah, so we're waiting on a few things to get in our studio. We've got, we've got episodes going, haven't we, backed up? Yeah. We do well, we, we blasted it, didn't we, at the start. I thought, I don't want to be waiting, people waiting for ages to get a... Uh, not like one episode, then you have to go back in and do another one. And yeah, it's a job then, isn't it? You have to maintain it, don't you? But we, we used to get like, you know, we started with Kilty and Ford in, whatever you do. Yeah. Blasting it. Oh, we, can just, we can just do that over two, do you know what I mean? We can just quad it over two days and then we go. Ellsby and Port Birkenhead, don't want to go there, do I? No. Chester University, don't want to go there. Oh, fuck, where, I'm, where are we? Where the fuck are we? Right, is it gonna, no, we're gonna go towards Chester. I love Chester jazz. Where are we here? I wanna go. We Hellsby and Port, mate. We'll go here. We're going to Hellsby Hill. Of all places. You've never been to Hellsby Hill, have you? No, neither have I. Have you not? No. Like and subscribe and leave a comment. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a few good episodes left um, before we go into our new studio. Molly was good, Yeah, it was good. That's like, yeah. Molly was really good. Carl Evans. If you're into sports science and um, he's a very informative oh, yeah. podcast, that was a brilliant podcast. Carl Evans. Carl Evans is my aesthetic condition coach and my nutritionist, but luckily he's my aesthetic condition coach. But when you got him on anyway, very interesting fella. Dead interesting. A lot of knowledge. Next level, really. Works in the Liverpool John Moores University. He's the head of sports science, so very, very. Knowledgeable man. Oh shit, here's 5-0, here's 5-0. Here's back. the fuzz. <laughs> Babylon. And he went the Olympics. It'd be great if he fucking pulled us, it'd be great content, wouldn't it? St stick one finger up to him, Jazz. I am. Uh, I can do. So, you he's probably know him, he's probably fucking picked you up on a motorway. <laughs> <laughs> right. What was he going to say then? Yeah, years ago. I done a video with me and my mates. Don't you say it before? That woman used to tell lies. Me and my mate used to, said that. Me and my mate used to drive around <laughs> during night and we used to we used to have a day where we used to tell lies. It was silly really but we used to love it and we used to just lie to people for fun. There's <laughs> an example. It's brilliant, it's, it's just brilliant. We just lie to people for fun and we started playing jokes. If you've ever seen the video, what we done? Hey mate, excuse me mate, is there a bank around here? And he goes, yeah mate, there's a blinds down there. And I go, put the, ba the bally on, yeah. Was that you? It's me, look. Fuck off. The was that you? Yeah. Was so, that you doing that physio? Yeah. Well, fucking so, hell. So, so me and him, we used to name... I didn't know that. Well, well, was that you doing that physio? Yeah. Me and my mate we used to go round. Oh, he goes, oh, oh, tech, he goes to, oh, I think it's shut up our farm. Yeah, yeah. You are messing. Yeah, well done. done. That's so well, well done. done. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> what, what was the point then? <laughs> what was I talking about before that? You were going round lying. No way, I didn't know that was you. Oh no, the police. So we do that was the best one that came out. <laughs> we, we done about five and we said to one fella, excuse me, is the bank around here? And nobody done. He leaned in the car and went, well funny enough, and pulled the um, police bag out. Yeah, he was under the police. No way. That's to that's get off. So yeah, he was trying to lick us. <laughs> but he weren't working. I still got that on the video, but... It's everywhere. Yeah. I didn't know that was you. It goes viral every now and again, doesn't it? No way. So funny that jazz. Yes. Did you just come with that on the spot? No. It was a video. You have to, have to own up to it. Like we watched this someone else done it first. That was good though. That was. We done a few of them, but that was the best one to do. It was the fella's smile, really, when he's watching. It's, he's like, oh, do you know what makes I think you've just missed it? You know, lads. You're like, oh no. <laughs> so funny. I've never met him, but I'd like to. <laughs> Because every now and again he goes viral, he goes viral, doesn't it? He's the, he's, the, he's the funny part, isn't he? His laugh, his smile. No, we've literally been driving around in a circle for 40 minutes. Oh, I've still got the scene. I usually use my phone. 
in its holster, what's one of them called? Cradle. For a sat nav, but that video keeps shaking. Like and subscribe and leave a comment. That car is fucking boasting. Go on, leave it in the comments. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why is that camera face? Literally thought it was on the wrong side of the road then. Yeah, but I done that in America, you know. I drove down a freeway on the wrong side of the road. People were going, oh my god, man! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's alright, I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we wrap it up then? Not to wrap up, we haven't even said that, have we? No, we've just oh, chatted we're shit. Chatted shit about winning medals. <laughs> winning gold medals. And um, yeah, we were 17 then. So, <laughs> we've managed to cover a year. We left school last time, now we've covered a year. I know I summoned my bill pretty quick. There's lots to tell. Yeah, just do this camera here. Yeah. Is he still watching? Anyway, I think we should call it a day. I'll see what happens. It's 41 minutes. It's fucking roasting. <laughs> right. Um, hopefully, we're going to find his help. We're sorry. Look, we're sorry. <laughs> He's not an informative yet. No, Jazz, jazz I, I want to, like, we'll, let's save this next time, but you've told me briefly about when you went to America, and I found it dead interesting, I, you know, it's like, America? America, man, and like, you are a real life Rocky Jazz, you really, really are. I used to love Rocky, you know, I still cry when Rocky wins or loses, you know, it's emotional, isn't I'm it? Not, not lying. I'll, I'll, I'll go do something traumatic with my family and then watch Rocky and cry. Did you like the last video? Great. Do you know why I nearly great. cried watching this bit when Craig, when she names the baby after Craig? Yeah. What's his name? It's my lady. It's Craig. And I, I'm watching, it's me, I'm playing five people in the one room. And I, on two occasions, I literally was on the brink of crying. Imagine what you could do with it when it is. Uh, a budget. With a budget. I know. That's the only one I've really spent money on, man. Um. What's it cost me? I don't know, about 800 quid all in, maybe a bit more. Wow, fucking hell. And that's it's not really on a scale of fucking things. The scouts are the maybe. Fuck you, leave <laughs> Um, Yeah, no, because some things I want to ask you about America. You know, it's all, you know, it's all right. It's all right for you, Jazz. <laughs> it's all right for you, lads, you know what I mean? Imagine getting up in the morning and going to fucking work every day. But I might, you know, you told me about the time when you were... Uh, you were sitting in a cafe with coffee in a Dunkin' Donuts, is this right? Are you not talking about it? Dunkin' Donuts? Where you, did you say? You went over and you had nothing, didn't you? $26. Three kids and a woman at home. Let's go make a break. It didn't happen, though, did it? Yeah, we got the opportunity, yeah, but no, you were like... Yeah, events led to events that, that gave me great opportunities, but it's always good to really to appreciate the, the little things that happen. If it doesn't go your way today, Something might have, you might have like um, set something up in the future. Well, this is funny, this because you're a boxer, I'm an actor, and you know, we're referencing Rocky a lot. Do you know Sylvester Stallone? Do you know the story about Rocky? He'd been in a few shit films and that, right? And he got a chance to meet a producer or meet someone, and he said, like, Yeah, I've got a script. And he literally went home and wrote that script in about four days, I believe. Oh. And he turns up and he loved it. And he was like, oh yeah, great, we'll buy the script. He went, you'll only buy the script if I'm playing the main man. And he was like, oh God. Mm, no, don't know about that, you know. But anyway, we well, don't have it then. But he wrote that script, and so he seized an opportunity. Yeah. And he wrote the script, and he went off and won the fucking Oscar after Oscar. Big shout out to Sly. Do you know what I've done? I sent his daughters the video. Because there's more chance what? of his daughters watching it than him. Ah, tactics. No response, like. So we'll see. Have a way to Bell, you Bell, you know him. Yeah. I like so. I like John <laughs> Mayer, I like me, sir. Yes, Sammy, yeah. Billy knows him too, doesn't he? Well, he said he's playing. Oh, shit, yeah. Do you, do you need to get us to slide? Nah. He might see you. Look at this, great. Look at this. He might see you, mightn't he? Let him. Let <laughs> him, please. Sly, please, if you can see me. It's, it's great for me profile, Sly. <laughs> Anyway, I'm doing my own fucking editing. There's going to be people who like me, and there's going to be people who me. like me and like you, but there's going to be people who like you and don't like me. Despise me, love you. Who the fuck's he sitting there with Turkey? Yeah. Who's that fuck on Jazz's with there? Little fucking real life snowman. Nah, 
put myself down there. I'll fucking catch. Anyway, in a bit, family. In a bit, family. Fucked! <laughs> so, me and Jazz have climbed up Hellsby Hill. Jazz, say hello. Hello. So, we are literally. Technically, we never climbed, oh, did we? We did. Look at this view. Oh. 